The African American Legend series highlights the accomplishments of blacks in areas as varied as politics, sports, aviation, business, literature, and religion. We will explore how African Americans have succeeded in areas where they've been previously excluded because of segregation, racism, and lack of opportunity. I'm your host, Dr. Roscoe C. Brown, Jr., and with us today is William H. Burgess III, the CEO of the Burgess Group. Glad to have you with us today, Bill. Great to be here with you, Roscoe. Now, tell us about the Burgess Group. What is the Burgess Group? How did it get founded? And what's your objective? Well, the Burgess Group is a retained executive search firm specializing in the consumer product goods and service industry. We recruit for major corporations, major nonprofits, and other organizations and, and associations, mid to senior level professionals. Well, that's a mouthful. <laughs> that's quite a task because, uh, as you know, uh, back 25, 35, 40 years ago, there were not many opportunities for African Americans in executive positions. And apparently your company uh, fills a niche for helping to identify positions and identify people in those positions. Uh, take us back a little. Uh, why did you start this firm and how did it come about? The reason I started this firm is that I used to have a office furniture space pen design business and that required warehousing, trucks, union crews, non-union crews, and I decided that I didn't want to continue having all that overhead. So I decided what was the most important thing in New York City in terms of business, and that was people, human resources. Mm -hmm. We don't have that many businesses in terms of manufacturing left in New York City. So I decided that that's what I wanted to do, was to try to get good people, human capital, into key positions in corporate America. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the secret to doing this? Because you sound as though you snap your fingers and it happens. What really is the secret to identifying the positions, identifying the people, and then making a marriage of those? Well, it comes first off, I think, by having good associations and networks, mm -hmm. knowing people like you, mm -hmm. and being associated with different organizations where major individuals in their given fields are identified or members. And in addition to that, having good corporate contacts. I've served on a lot of major boards. So as a result of the kind of people that I've met, they've, been, they've told me about opportunities that existed within their companies or other industries that they were affiliated with. I know in my case, uh, being at the university, I've gotten calls many, many times, would you recommend someone? Fortunately, when I was at Bronx Community College and not the Graduate Center, I had a pool of people I could identify. But the uh, needs have expanded so much. The needs in technology, needs in marketing, needs in engineering, needs in technology, and so on. Now, what do you attribute that to? Why has the need for African Americans and other minorities increased over time? It's increased over time, just like the uh, the, the people that you have behind here on, on, on the blackboard, um, uh, Jack, like Jackie Robinson, as areas have been penetrated by African Americans, it has shown the world that we are capable of doing everything that any, anyone else does. Mm -hmm. So as a result, uh, students have gone into these different fields that you've just described and now are either working in those industries or about to work mm -hmm. in those industries. So we've seen a, a growing tide of people being diversified in the kinds of choices they, that they make for their careers. Well, of course, you were talking about preparation, mm -hmm. using that preparation, getting entrance. Uh, how much of your work is spent on getting people their first executive job? Well, we don't uh, work with people who are just out of college. Mm -hmm. We only do recruiting for corporations of mid to senior levels. Mm -hmm. So a uh, minimum of two years of experience, mm -hmm. work experience out of college. And then uh, what we do is most of our re recruiting, be because we're a retained executive search firm, is to really work as management consultants with corporations mm -hmm. in terms of their staffing uh, needs and, and human resources. So we really um, identify those companies that, like you mentioned, construction, real estate development, sales and marketing, that, are, that need, have needs in these areas. We go after them, we first get the clients, and then we go to our database and then our associational networks, people like yourself, mm -hmm. where we source 
potential candidates for the jobs that we have available that we're recruiting for. That's interesting. Many firms start with the persons first and then find the jobs. What you find is the position and then find the person. Exactly. Now, when you find these positions, that don't, doesn't mean that they're guaranteed to be filled by the person you recommend, but they indicate to you that they have these particular kinds of needs. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the major needs that corporations, let's say mid-sized corporations have different needs than large corporations. Mm -hmm. What what are the, some of the needs that they have? Well, large corporations have the whole gamut, particularly if, if in, like our, in our industry that we focus on, which is consumer product goods and services, we're dealing with companies that are, uh, that are like pharmaceutical companies, uh, construction companies, real estate development companies, companies that, that would have people in um, uh, communications, uh, advertising, uh, fundraising and development if it's a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And so we, we first sort of identify what the needs are of those companies. And then we, sh we make a proposal to those companies about we can find you or we will present to you a diverse candidate slate for this particular search mm -hmm. of with these needs that you, you have enumerated, and we will do that in a very specific amount of time. So within mm -hmm. three weeks, we present benchmark candidates mm -hmm. to our clients, and from that, they decide if they would want to interview them, and then from that point, they'll decide if they want to hire them. But we really work with them from, from the beginning, when we sign a contract, and they pay us, and then when we present benchmark candidates, which is usually about three weeks within the process, and they pay us again. Mm -hmm. And then they pay us the, the final amount when the candidate is hired. So we seek mm -hmm. to hire. Now, do you follow up on your the success of your candidates? We guarantee all of our clients. Now, what does guarantee mean? That if they don't perform, you get somebody else? Exactly. Or you give them the money back? We will replace the candidate at no charge uh -huh. if the person does not perform mm -hmm. and uh, according to the needs of the client. Mm -hmm. And uh, in and if the in any case we will we will work with the client and the candidate mm -hmm. throughout the first year of their employment mm -hmm. because there's sometimes are issues that the client wa doesn't want to say as well mm -hmm. as the candidate doesn't mm -hmm. want to say so we kind of operate as an intermediary mm -hmm. there. That's very. Interesting. Now, what are some of the specific skills that you look for when you identify a candidate? Well, first off, in that is that they they have to have the right. Uh, academic uh, skill set. What does that mean? That means that they, either, in our case, it has to be at least a BA degree in mm -hmm. some particular field that relates to the position that we're rec mm -hmm. recruiting for. Mm -hmm. And then they have to have appropriate experience mm -hmm. where they can uh, demonstrate that they have been a, at least exemplary in their performance mm -hmm. up to now. Mm -hmm. And then because we are bringing people from outside of the corporation into the corporation, we have to make sure that they are a good fit mm -hmm. within the, the, the parameters of the job level and, uh, and the scope of the work that has to be done. And we also have to make sure that they are uh, long-term contributors to the organization, meaning that they not only possess the skills that are enumerated, enumerated in the job description, but go beyond that in terms of other qualities and, and the characteristics that they can bring to the job and to the corporation. Well, how important are communication skills, particularly written communication? Utmost of importance because without the ability to communicate vi uh, uh, verbally and written, uh, you, you, we couldn't, really couldn't help the uh, individual candidate. Well, how do you determine that they have these skills? I'm sure you interview them, but the written skills, you must have some way of analysis, analyzing their writing. We ask for bio, uh, bios of our candidates at the level that we do searches. Our searches start at $75,000 mm -hmm. and go uh, and above. So at that point, a person is more than just a resume. They have a bio on themselves, mm -hmm. and they have writing samples of their work. Mm -hmm. Even if they're in engineering or in construction, mm -hmm. there are spreadsheets, mm -hmm. there are uh, um, uh, RFPs and proposals that they've written, and as well as if it was more in arts and letters where you would see more of a treatise on a particular development of some product mm -hmm. or some kind of marketing, mm -hmm. uh, marketing initiative. 
Uh, do different companies look for different skills? I think I know the answer to that, but how do you differentiate between the skills that one company needs and another company needs? Well, it, it really gets down to uh, the industry. Uh, and uh, one of the, we're moving in a time now, and this is true for all of our candidates, and that is that uh, we can't say, oh, this person is very, very bright, they know Dr. Brown, and um, uh, we, I think that they can do this job. And so when I ask about their, 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 their skill set and find out that they are not really uh, trained in this particular area, to today's marketplace, you can't translate your skills easily into another area. Now you tell me that, because at one time it was said that you have certain kind of skills you can transfer from one field to another. Why is it you can't do that now? Because our world has gotten so specific and technolog technologically um, uh, in intense. And the challenges that technology has posed on all industries require specification. Well, I'm smiling because many of the big corporations uh, look for people as CEOs who are not in that business. They take somebody from the food business and put them in the automobile business, pick them from the automobile and put them in the banking business. Now, if the, the top people could do that, why can't the average executive do that? Well, one of the reasons why companies go outside for their CEOs and senior most management is that most times the st stockholders are requiring you know, a, a blood transfusion, a kind of change of, of, of focus. So they think that skills that have been honed, honed in, in other areas would be better suited in this particular industry. So at, at that level, the person has distinguished themselves in, in, in their ability to do a, a, a given CEO position. But it's important that they are able to translate and bring some of that into what they're doing. So really at that particular point, because so much of that management is by team management, mm -hmm. that this person is coming in, he has to assess or she has to assess their team and then coordinate all of the various functions. So it's really more of a coordination. And okay, that's well, why you, those... you've answered my question with regard to CEOs. Now let's go down the, the, the COO. Right. That's more specific. Uh, how, how much does knowledge of an industry uh, is a requirement for being a CEO or a vice president type? We're right now recruiting for the affiliation between Columbia University and Harlem Hospital and the um, uh, Health and Hospitals Corporation. Um, ha Harlem Hospital is run, its clinical staff is run by Columbia uh, University's uh, uh, medical school. And the Harlem Hospital is also run by Health and Hospitals Corporation of the City of New York. And Columbia University provides the staff for Harlem Hospital. So we are now at doing a search for a CAO, a Chief Administrative Officer, who will report to the ch Chief Operating Officer. This person is the second in command for this troika of influences and has to kind of report up to the CEO and report to these three other entities. This person has to have healthcare administration background and has to have um, uh, a administration of a hospital in their background. There's no way about it. You can't go out and translate having run a maybe a university and come in to do this. This is spe job specific. It has to have these kind of qualifications. Now that's very interesting because those of us who've been in the university business like to believe that there are certain skills that are transferable. Mm -hmm. There are certain administrative skills, certain statistical skills, certain communication skills. And that given a situation where you have a good staff, you can come in and use those skills and keep the operation moving. It's very much like, I don't know whether you do search for college presidents, but it's very much like uh, searching for a college president. Mm -hmm. And many times it has to do with the right fit. Mm -hmm. it, it isn't just the skills. It is a fit. It's the way people communicate, the way they interact with each other, and the way they manage their work. Because one of the things I'm sure you know is that in an administrative job, much of your success is dependent on how you make decisions, how you make priorities, and how you organize your work. Mm -hmm. You can be the brightest person in the world, but if you can't organize your work, you're not going to be able to get certain things done. Absolutely. Now, given that this is your business, how do you go about 
figure that out, get that right batch. Well, the thing is, is that it's amazing, Orozco. Sometimes we always give about three to five benchmark candidates on every search, mm -hmm. and it's representative of the U.S. population. Mm -hmm. We make sure that minorities are highly visible within that, 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 that slate. But the main thing is that we give them the best and the brightest candidates. So we have to make sure that's first. And in order to, in order to do that, we have to make sure that uh, they not only meet the skill set, can give value added uh, above that, but also will fit into the existing structure of that organization, mm -hmm. institution, or company. And frequently, who I would have thought would have been the number one candidate, is not mm -hmm. the candidate chosen for the mm -hmm. very reasons you just described, mm -hmm. because he or she may not have been in a good mood day and didn't project the right mm -hmm. kind of chemistry, if you will, mm -hmm. with the, uh, uh, the, the, the hiring manager. Mm -hmm. And that can make all the difference. It's like, uh, I, Philip Morris has been a, camp, a client for, for years, one of our first clients, and um, I wouldn't dare send a person to Philip Morris that um, uh, would have a problem with smoking. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask those kind of questions. Although Philip him. Morris is now running ads to get people to stop smoking. That's right. So I don't think that really is what they would do now because they have a social pressure sure. to do somewhat differently That's on true. that. That's true. But let's go back to your, your pool. Mm -hmm. uh, your pool is primarily a minority. Uh, what about gender? Uh, what about ethnicity? And what about the uh, involvement of Caucasian Americans? How, how does your firm develop your client pool? We make sure that on all searches, we give a representative candidate slate of the U.S. and global population. So that will include minorities and majority candidates of both genders. Mm -hmm. So in any, given, if, any given search, you'll have that mix. We don't want to be defined only as an African American mm -hmm. uh, executive search firm, because that would limit us and or make us such a niche boutique type of business. We look at the broad landscape, uh, the entire U.S. population, and we make sure that majority candidates are in our mix and a part of our data, data, data system and process. Well, when the company comes to you and say, look, I really need to want to hire a minority or a person of a certain ethnic group to work with a certain population, uh, how do you handle that? Well, we call that a targeted search. Mm -hmm. That can be targeted for gender. It can be targeted for ethnicity. It can be targeted for a, a given skill set. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of search we do as we would do a traditional search. Mm -hmm. Same amount of time, but we cast a wider net mm -hmm. for that specific area or that specific need of the, of, 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 of the company. And even in some cases when a company insists on the best and the brightest and we look as consultants, as management consultants, we look at the, at the whole um, um, industry on one level, but also that specific company in terms of what they need to be looking at in terms of being representative of the people that they serve or the products that they make. So uh, we bring that to their attention from time to time. And, uh, and frequently, um, the selection is not the, the minority candidate. It's the, it could be the majority candidate or it could be the woman versus the man. But it, it really then comes to be the best and the brightest. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we have now to walk. Now, you use that cliche, best and the brightest. How do you define the best and the brightest? I define you the give them a test? <laughs> well, 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 what we do do, we don't do a test, but what we do do is that we do our due diligence on that particular candidate. We research their backgrounds, not beyond just degrees, but in terms of we, the three references we ask for every client mm -hmm. at this senior level of, of, mm -hmm. of recruitment, and that is, Give us a reference of somebody that you've worked for. Mm -hmm. Give us a reference of somebody you've worked with, peer mm -hmm. relationships, and give us somebody that you have worked, that, that's worked for you, has been subordinate to mm -hmm. you. And out of that, we can mm -hmm. get a kind of cross section yeah. of really where that person's coming mm -hmm. from and where they've been and where they're going. We have a, a unique product that we call diversity resource planning. That's for companies that have had a difficulty in, in hiring diverse candidates. And what we do is, we do original research for them to identify individuals who are, who are, are minorities, 
who are doing that particular work in another company. Mm -hmm. So they'll come in, we'll do a dossier on them, they'll come into the company and meet with you or meet with a, a senior person within the organization and um, talk openly about their career concerns, where they're going, how they see their careers going. It's different from coming to you and saying, Dr. Brown, I want to be your assistant, mm -hmm. and uh, I know you have this job opening. So the whole approach of the candidate is different. And the whole approach of the interviewing hiring manager is different. So out of that, uh, we hope that when the company is at a position to hire or is budgeted to hire, they'll look upon these individuals mm -hmm. as the kind of people who they'd like to bring into their organization, strategically plan it within the organization for helping the company around some of its major concerns. Well, how do you prepare your candidates for what I call the Jackie Robinson syndrome? the first in the business. The, you know, uh, how do you do that? You know, it's really interesting that you say that. A good example is um, uh, we had a client uh, that was a legal client that wanted only candidates from um, um, Ivy League schools. And, um, and we were recruiting a senior level lawyers, attorneys within the legal group. And uh, so I tried to get the client to understand that beyond just the Ivy League schools, that's a second tier schools mm -hmm. uh, that are equally as imp uh, important in terms of the, 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 the candidate products that they produce. And um, uh, we presented the Ivy League. You always give the customer what they want mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. You try to in, in introduce them to other things secondarily. And then we presented these secondary candidates. And so the guy said to me, he said, um, Oh, this person, I thought you were giving me uh, secondary universities. This person is from Harvard. I said, no, this person's from Howard. <laughs> and he said, um, uh, Howard? Uh, I said, yes, Howard University in Washington, D.C. And he said, oh, no, I told you I wanted uh, people from Ivy League. They couldn't fit in here. Everybody else in the department are all Ivy Leaguers. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, sir, I mean, you know, we have to look at it this way. If, if that was the case, uh, Thurgood Marshall could never be a part of your legal department because yeah. he's a graduate from Howard. So you have to kind of educate your your, 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 your client yeah. to make them understand uh, or look look at things a little differently. And that's why a a minority owned, hundred percent minority owned uh, uh, executive search firm is important today in the marketplace. Now, how does someone get into your database if they want to get one of these executive jobs? Oh, that's that's very special. I mean, people like you have to recommend. No, no, the reason. The, the, the way that we do that is that uh, a lot of the associations, the National MBA Association, the Association of Asian mm -hmm. Journalists, the uh, Association of Native American mm -hmm. uh, uh, MBAs, all of these associations we are members of. Mm -hmm. And we send people that are uh, part of our research team to their various conferences. Mm -hmm. They'll meet with them and we'll get their resumes. Mm -hmm. And in, in some case, that's one way. Another way is that we buy resumes from different associations mm -hmm. and organizations. And then we do a lot of internet mm -hmm. uh, uh, posting and, and mm -hmm. on, on the website and advertising on Do you have a internet. website? We have a website. What is your website? It's www.theburgessgroup.com. Very easy. Yeah. Very easy. Now you're the second vice president of the 100 black men. And a hundred black men for years, for some 40 plus years, has been a leader in helping to develop young African American males in various professions and government positions. Uh, what is the hundred black men doing now and what should they be doing to help improve the opportunities for African Americans? Well, you know, we have a, a, a started under your leadership as president of 100 black men, a, an education committee and we have scholarships that we give out to uh, very, very high achieving high school students in the, in the five boroughs of New York City. But well, one of the, those students recently uh, had graduated from uh, NYU in economics and for two years, Dr. Brown, had not been able to find a job. Mm -hmm. Well, I brought him into my company and he worked for me for a year and I got him a job at one of our clients, New York Life, and because he wanted to be in investor relations and they would in turn give him the, 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 the uh, brokerage license uh, uh, test that he would need and now he's working at AXA and he's one of my financial advisors. Mm -hmm. So we're words, doing we're doing individual work for our scholarship uh, recipients. We're also doing work through our Eagle Academy, mm -hmm. and I've just started another initiative uh, mm -hmm. this past year called the Collegiate One Hundred. Mm -hmm. We've identified York College, 
part of the SUNY mm -hmm. system, that uh, and their mail initiative, and we're working with their uh, um, the um, mail center there at York College, and trying. We, well, we have have a a week a monthly session. Uh, Mondays, fourth Monday of the week, where we call it the barber shop, mm -hmm. where we can talk about the issues of what it takes to get the test done, the paper written, in order to make sure that they are proceeding to get that degree. It is critical that we get more African American males educated and get that BA degree, that ticket to ride, if you will, in their hands as soon as possible, because that's going to make the difference. Uh, we can't do it all just through a, a, an academy for high school students. We have to look at a continuum of education from cradle to grave. Well, clearly in the 50 plus years since the Civil Rights Movement, since the uh, Civil Rights Act, uh, things have changed. They haven't changed enough, but it does require some of the things that you talked about, the leadership you provide in your firm, what you do with 100 black men. So today on African American Legends, we've been talking with uh, William H. Burgess III, the president of the Burgess Group, about opportunities for African Americans in executive positions. Thanks for being with us today, Bill. Thank you, Roscoe. Okay.